Among the many books and articles written on U.S. history, few have taken an honest look at where we came from and how we got here. Most versions are nationalistic appraisals of the country's manifest destiny, full of metaphors and symbolic euphemistic phrases like melting pot or rugged individualism. Many important stories have been left out of our current renderings of our heritage as a nation. A few prime examples include the fact that President Abraham Lincoln revoked the right to habeas corpus during the Civil War, a direct violation of the United States Constitution. As a result, many Confederate sympathizers residing in the northern states were arrested and held without trial. At the same time, guerrilla attacks were being carried out on towns supporting the North by gangs of Southern Confederate bushwhackers, and Union troops were burning Midwestern communities who had sided with the South. Another fine example of the untold stories in U.S. history is the fact that newspaper publishers William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer were instrumental in inspiring the Spanish-American War that gave the U.S. control of Cuba and the Philippines. Their chains of newspapers promoted a military invasion of Cuba by spreading deliberate lies about the supposed severe treatment of Cubans by Spanish soldiers. Demanding intervention by U.S. military forces, they printed stories claiming that a quarter of the entire population of Cuba had been exterminated under Spanish rule. The war became a cause celeb for Hearst and his colleagues in the U.S. media. These powerful media moguls were eventually very successful in their efforts to drum up support for the Spanish-American War among the United States population. They practiced mass media manipulation, pure and simple. It was perhaps the first media-driven war, and perhaps a precursor to later media moguls like Rupert Murdoch. After a mysterious explosion destroyed the U.S. Navy battleship Maine in Havana Harbor on January 5, 1898, the newspaper publishers got their wish at last. Although no direct evidence was ever found that would link Spain to the disaster which killed 260 people, the U.S. declared war in 1898. It was the birth of the U.S. as a global empire, and a dream was finally fulfilled for the media moguls. One more addition to the story. Despite a popular misconception used as propaganda by warmongers in that era, Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders did not actually ride horses as they conquered San Juan Hill in Cuba. They actually walked up that hill. The horses that were being shipped from the United States never arrived in Cuba. It's best to discard that old myth as well. Most of the cowboys of the western frontier in the U.S. were a bunch of dangerous drunken hoodlums. These cattle drivers and ranch hands that the film industry has turned into heroic icons of American culture were in actuality a threat to many western towns. When the cowboys got their one big paycheck at the end of a long cattle drive, they all came riding into town and trouble naturally ensued. Gambling, gunfights, the molestation of women and other crimes were the natural result. This was the reason that towns like Tombstone, Arizona, and Dodge City hired the fastest guns in the West as sheriffs and marshals in an attempt to stop the glorious cowboys from shooting up the town and killing each other. Many of the lawmen, Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, and the others, were already suspected of multiple killings before they were given the job. In fact, it was pretty much a major requirement for potential law enforcement employment in the Old West to have killed somebody with a gun. Nobody cared if the act had been murder or self-defense, as long as you had shot someone and were quick on the draw. Outlaws were welcome, as long as they agreed to wear a badge. These are only a few of the seldom-told stories of past U.S. history. Among these true-life tales, you will find pirates, spies, and revolutionaries.